guys, it's Julesy, and I know I haven't put up a video in a while, and y'all probably like, where? It's Pop Snark. This is not Pop Snark. It's Thursday, and it's time for another Smart Brown Girl Thursday, where we talk about the cultural issues that impact women of color. Before we get into it, I would like to announce that the Smart Brown Girl shop is back open. We also finally have some shirts for the men folk. We have the Stay Blessed and Unbothered shirt that is now available in women and men's sizes. We also have a Stay Blessed and Unbothered coffee mug along with a Smart Brown Girl coffee mug. So super excited to bring those things to you. So as soon as I get my Stay Blessed and Unbothered mug, you know I'm going to be rocking the ish out of it. Every pop star video. This week I wanted to talk to you guys about the nice versus the angry black woman. And what really differentiates us between being classified as a nice black woman and why is that something that we need to strive for and what's up with this angry black woman stereotype? Hmm. I don't even think that I often hear anymore women, black women being termed as angry black women. That does not mean that similar adjectives and allegories are gonna be placed around how we describe black women and their actions. So to start, I want to really read to you what Chimamanda said in her speech that really struck with me. She says, I think that what our society teaches young girls, and I think it's something that's quite difficult for even older women and self-professed feminists to shrug off, is that idea that likability is an essential part of you, of the space you occupy in the world, that you're supposed to twist yourself into shapes to make yourself likable. That you're supposed to hold back sometimes, pull back, don't quite say, don't be too pushy because you have to be likable. And I say, that's bullshit. And she said it with the most proper accents and I was like yes two snaps cheers to you boop did that I agree 120% fact proverbial church amen hallelujah this discussion touches on so many things that I feel like we as black women are going through right now between the way we've discussed Serena Williams over the past two decades that she's been one of the top tennis players and then this idea that she is constantly and it's not just white people that are pushing it on her I think now it's a little bit easier to kind of say oh it's white supremacy's white mediocrity she is in a very white sport but I remember as a child growing up hearing from other black people kind of about what they did not appreciate about how her father acted and how cocky her sister and Serena were her sister Venus and her her sister Venus, Venus and herself were. And even living in this YouTube space, I think a lot of the criticisms that have been levied against me are that people think I'm arrogant, people think I act like I'm smarter than everyone else. Same as my interactions with people here in the South and Houston. And it's almost like, but why does my confidence and my self of security offend you? And quite frankly, I've always taken the approach is why should I be concerned when I haven't done or said anything poignantly to you to warrant such criticisms against me just being okay with my opinion, believing in myself to the utmost ability. You know, Chibamanda did say that you have to stop worrying about being offensive. If you start thinking about being likable, you are not gonna tell your story honestly because you are gonna be so assertive with not offending and that's going to ruin your story. And when you look at who are successful black women that have made it, I think us being able to be successful and however you define success for yourself is that it does take us, us believing in ourselves the utmost first because there are so many ways that we are put down and pushed down and told that we are nothing and belittled, whether it's from our skin complexion to our ethnic features to the texture of our hair to the vernacular we use to our body, our sexualization. Every ounce of the black woman has is demeaned in some way through the course of her life. And I think in order for us to be successful, we have to be the ones that believe in ourselves the most. There's no way to believe in yourself and not exude that outward. It's just this idea that black women who have an opinion, somehow we use all these adjectives to describe us, whether it's aggressive, whether it's mean, whether it's bitchy, whether we're telling somebody that they're cocky or they're overly confident. These are all things that feed into the stereotype of the angry black woman. The New York Times did a write-up of Serena last September and they were talking about how, not even considering race, as a woman, she is not perceived as, as likable because she believes in herself. Even though she has the stats and the skill set to back up her belief in herself, you know, what we would approve of in a man in that we find Kanye to be genius 
who believes in himself first and does all this rhetorical what shenanigans about how everyone's against him and he's going to do it for himself first. And so many of, of us are writing for him as a genius, but we see it in a woman and all of a sudden it becomes something that makes her unlikable. And I don't mind having a respectful argument about with you. I don't mind having a debate. I don't mind having this conversation where we might not see eye to eye. But, you know, I think the great thing about a debate is that it forces you to really reaffirm your beliefs. And a lot of times, if you walk away from a debate still believing in yourself, you're walking away with a stronger sense of faith. The nice, likable person is so beloved here in this space. And I don't think there's anything wrong with people who are okay with being nice. But I think what we perceive as nice is honestly a woman not having an opinion or not stating her opinion on things out loud or kind of passively oh well nah, nah, nah. those are the people that we like on the youtube space but i don't really see longevity in trying to broadcast yourself as this person who's always so even kill and won't ever say anything be or won't ever flex her own opinion like i don't know i just don't it's not my it's not my ministry what black woman has been successful being nice it's not until we put our foot down and stand our ground that we make it you look at who are the most successful black women whether you look at a ursula burns who is a ceo at like xerox or you know a beyonce or oprah or you know the black woman who's the most wealthiest in africa she owns an oil company in nigeria you can't possibly convince me that any of these women are known for being simply nice. They all have a very serious confidence in themselves. The key to really manifesting this confidence and believing in yourself and having it benefit you to have self-worth backed by content and actual integrity. There's definitely a dearth amongst millennials um, where because we have such a visual image and where we don't, there's a lot of us who don't have any content behind the pretty pictures. We don't have anything to say. And I was reading James Baldwin, um, Nobody Knows My Name, and he made a statement in there that just kind of really resonated with me. You can only face in others what one can face in oneself. And I've talked about this before in my lack of support and losing friends video where it's often the familiar, especially amongst black women, it's the familiar that we are turned off by and that we see something else in someone else, but we are offended by the way that they use it. We often have the same set of skills with the same amount of time in our day. We have a lot of the same things accessible to us, you know, just within our own being, and we get turned off because somebody is using it in a more provocative or different way. People don't like Serena, not necessarily because she's a super skilled tennis player, but because she has a belief in her best skill. We all have a skill that is our best. And a lot of us don't believe in our best skill. A lot of us have fed into this mantra of self-doubt, and you know, Serena has entirely eschewed that and is extremely confident in her strongest skill it doesn't have to be as exacerbated as her you don't have to be like the number one in the entire world but you have something in you that you are really good at and you are not utilizing the same way that someone else has a skill set that they are really good at and they use you know whether it's even just someone having the voice to speak up and speak out and so even like with the amandala and kylie jenner situation it's to, to term it as a feud is entirely incorrect you know Amanda Love was responding to somebody who tagged her in a comment on Kylie's Jenner, Kylie Jenner's picture. At no point was it, I'm against you. She made an observation and yeah, it was a slightly snarky comment, but nothing about it was aggressive or angry or, you know, trying to pick a fight or anything like that. You know, she made a snarky comment. Kylie made one back. I'm sure Amanda is not spending her day worried about Kylie Jenner. Moving on. Bye, boo. I want all of us everyone to get away from feeding into using these stereotypes negative connotations and adjectives towards black women whenever they assert themselves and i want my smart brown girl specifically to believe in themselves first and don't be scared of your own confidence don't be worried about the likability the moment that you understand and you really hone in on having content and good integrity and firm ethics and you define that for yourself and you don't allow anyone else to demote that within you, then you, the people that need to come into your life will come in, not only just the people, but the opportunities will come into your life and a lot of things will work itself out for you. Those that need to like you, will like you. I'm here, girl. You here with the Smart Brown Girl. Movie. People who spend way too much time 
commenting on anything about Julesy, about how much they don't like me. And I'm so unconcerned because my smart brown girl movement is riding strong. Brown girls don't even have to agree with me all the time, but they get what I'm doing and they appreciate it. And for that, I appreciate the ish out of all y'all. As always, don't forget to shop smartbrowngirl.com. Pick out one of the mugs. So once I finally get mine, you can sip along with me while I finally get around to doing pop snark. And thanks for watching. Deuces!